Happy Sunday, and welcome back to Retake the Week. It's been a very busy week of major gameplay, really. There's been other games going on in the background, but with the major starting at 12 and finishing every day at like 9, 10 p.m., that's been taking up the majority of our attention, the majority of our lives. There's still three games left to play in this elimination stage today, and we get to finally see if teams like G2, FaZe, and Na'Vi will make it through. And for my pickums, we bless, we pray. But it actually does come through, because my O3 has disappointed me. That's been my big issue so far. My 3 O's nailed Spirit, Mouse. Both my O3s had to go and win their O2 match. What noobs. So here we are. Uh, Quack joining me as usual. How are your pickups looking? I'm wondering, because you, you seem like you're doing pretty well. Well, I fucked up the first stage uh, quite wildly, but um, oh, yeah. this stage is going really, really well. Uh, I have, uh, yeah, I, I have a good chance that getting 9 out of 10 today, which is amazing. I've only missed one 0-3 pick, and that was it. So the rest of it, I've nailed. Um, Not bad. But, yeah. Yeah, go, yeah. Uh, gold coin at most, so we'll see how the playoffs go afterwards. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel good. I feel good. Yeah, it's, it's it's annoying to be limited like that when you uh, when you get to this stage. You're like, oh, I already fucked up the first one. Damn. Damn, what a shame. No matter how goaded your performance is now, it's kind of ruined. Yeah, I, I think one of my misses as well from the you know, the six that go through. I think I had Heroic going through, like a lot of people. And mm -hmm. that didn't turn out to be the case. They went one and three. Uh, but let's just dive into it, because our real topics are going to be, firstly, related to the Major. So mm -hmm. why don't we... Uh, let's, let's just discuss it, because the opening stage was not that important to me. It's the main stage that matters. And we had some pretty big results. I think the biggest one for me so far... I thought Furia would be bad... I didn't think they'd be this bad. Like, I give them too much credit, I think, a lot of the time. And this event proves that I should really stop because there was absolutely nothing working for this roster. There's nothing made any sense. I mean, you expect, like, pop-off Keserato maps to, like, help carry you through against some, like, really weak opponents. That wasn't even enough. He didn't even do that to a high enough degree that it actually mattered. Like, sure, they won a map against Ecstatic, in their best of three. They'd already lost to G2, already lost to FaZe. And it seemed like when they were given the layup to make it out, they just couldn't do it. How much of their games did you actually manage to watch? Because I know with two games going on at the same time, sometimes you're like, oh, do I care about Ecstatic Fury if there's a better game going on on the winning side? Or did you actually tune into them? Uh, I didn't watch the Ecstatic Fury game. I watched a couple other games, a bit scattered here and there. Uh, followed Brawlin quite a bit, obviously. But... Um... I've got a few of the games. I, I think I watched more games in the opening stage, actually. But but this stage has been so stacked. So I don't blame yeah. you for picking Heroic because I feel like there were there were probably twelve, tw probably twelve teams in this. I think the top twelve teams in the stage, if they had made playoffs, I would have said yes, that that's valid. They probably deserve that, and they they'd have a level. You know, it's mm. not too big of an upset, even if Furia make it through, which is one of the top top twelve. I think I think Furia are. <clears throat> they're so hit and miss but when they hit they hit but they only hit once in a blue moon it seems so like it's uh i put them all three so i didn't think they would but like if they had yeah. i would have said well yeah this is this is the fury we know like this is the fury that we think should be making major playoffs um but they didn't so uh heroic i don't blame you for picking um it's been a crazy stacked stage to be honest because i uh, yeah it's, uh, I mean, we had the favorites, of course, to make the playoffs. Um, I, I do have the feeling that probably it might be, I, I can't actually remember. Maybe it was like this in Paris as well. But I feel like this is the case where pretty much no matter who makes the playoffs, there are like a couple of teams that probably could have deserved to make the playoffs that are going to miss out. Like, uh, her Heroic miss out. And I feel like going into the stage, I would have said, well, yeah, Heroic could have made playoffs um either g2 or vp are gonna miss out today both of them could have made playoffs um and then we have navi of course that might miss out um so it's been crazy stacked crazy stacked fury didn't yeah. play the best of cs though we saw that already in the opening stage i did watch the lin vision game oh, well, uh, and it feel like it feels like nothing has changed since then from everything i'm hearing <laughs> um no yeah no, it was ugly. It was really ugly. I have two IGLs, neither one of which has been particularly highly rated recently. And between them, they managed to muster up a fat lot of nothing. 
So I mm. think they, they really need to revise this roster again. I mean, make the changes that everyone knows need to be made. Is essentially the advice that comes, comes down from on high. We all know the solution. It's staring them right in the face. But instead, they're going to keep wasting money on Fallen, I bet you. So this, this will be a discussion we're going to have recurring for a long time. But let's talk mm. about someone else. Ecstatic, I think, played firstly impressively just to get here. Mm -hmm. But then the fact that they also took a win, sure, again, it's, we, we did just spend like a good amount of time roasting them. But it was a win, nonetheless, against Furia, and they outplayed them. Like That's one thing that you're going to expect from Ecstatic. It's not going to be like you're outfragging them, because yeah, have you looked at the roster? Have you watched these guys play? They're not super talented players. They're really good. Fundamentally, they may play a good system. And they've got a really good caller, but I don't think anyone really pops off as an individual. Like nothing, nothing screams at you. This team's gonna frag you. But the fact that they actually managed to call their way to a win against Furia, I think was really impressive. And they kept the other games respectable. Like they didn't mm. you know, get close to Cloud Nine, but they were close to Mouse in the opener. And then the best of three against G Two was surprisingly tense for a lot of it. So I think it's a really good reflection of well how well-constructed this roster is in terms of the chemistry and the fit, but also great job on the coach, whose name is eluding me, and Patty for really Kessler. whipping these boys into shape. Is it... Would you say sorry? Yeah, yes, Kessler, the oldest Rollis coach. Yeah, okay, I was about but to I say think But okay. I think he's only there temporarily just to help out. I don't think he's actually signed. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's been there 11 days, so I don't think he's actually yeah. got much of an influence <laughs> on all that. Yeah. They've had a very respectable run because uh, you, they didn't come close to Cloud9 this time, but they got very close in the opening stage, in the opener. Um, they played, mm. they beat Furia, which is, I mean, okay, we shit on Furia, but Furia is still a respectable team with, like, if you can, if you can outplay, uh, yeah, if you can outplay Serato, then you are good, like, period. Uh, they played three very respectable maps against G2 as well, which I feel, last night, I feel like it shouldn't fly under the radar. They won yeah. one of them, and the rest of them, like, sure, it's not like, it's not like the full 24 rounds, but that's a very respectable score. It's not like they just won an upset mat and then got blown, got blown out. They actually, like, mm. you know, 13-7, 13-8, that's, like, a fair a fair performance. Um, and they did it without Patty going too huge. And they did it while Monacy was going huge. So, like, um, yeah. 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 Good job. So, uh, I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. Uh, let's focus on the throw uh, quickly, because mm -hmm. we have, we've talked about the teams who kind of you know, struggled, surprised. Oh, actually, this is a 3 1 team. How worried were you for Vitality after they lost their opening BO1? Because I personally predicted it, you know, I put money on it, and I couldn't really bring myself to believe they were weak, but I was. There's a little part of me that's a little shaken by the level of play I saw, not only against Eternal Fire, but then also against Mongols, against Imperial. Every time I saw those games happening, I'm watching it and thinking, this doesn't feel like there's a massive gulf in class from Vitality to these guys. What are your expectations for them coming into the playoffs? Because I'm not really feeling them as a super dangerous team, even though it really feels like they should be. Um, it feels really weird to say this sentence, but Zaibu is doing fuck all, right? So sure. um, my, I think a lot of people, prob I think uh, most people probably would attempt them to be one of the top three teams to win the major going into this. Yeah, uh, I don't have them going for the win. I think it's going to be another quarters, maybe semis exit, depending on who they get as a matchup. Because as much as this as this well, legend stage has been stacked, uh, the next play like the playoffs are also going to be stacked as hell. So, um, oh god, yeah, it's going to be a great playoff unless, bracket. I yeah, I heard someone say Zaiwu was sick. Did you hear that? Is is that I true? Did. Like um, it was it was an interview, and I think it's I can't remember who the interview is with. I think it might be Spinks or it might be Apex. Or it might have been a tweet. But I think one of the other players mentioned that uh, Zywoo is actually ill. There might be a mm. good reason for him doing sweet nothing. But it's still a problem if you're Vitality. And that's clearly what's, as I said, there looked like there's not a golfing class between them and these like lower level teams. A big part mm. of that is that your number one superstar isn't really showing up. Yeah. And it's, I was about to reference the, how much of the... Uh, what Maui Swint Nake watch party have you been even vaguely aware of? Oh, uh, pretty much nothing. I watch okay, other There's, other there's an internal discussion on that fucking stream right now about what a floor raiser is. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's it's never ending. But essentially, yeah, without Zai Wu, where's the floor of this team? It's so low. 
<laughs> when yeah. you think about it. Especially if you're talking about not just replacing Zoe, but Zoe being on the server, playing the spots he plays, and not fragging out. Yeah, the team looks very different. The team looks very different. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a bit concerned for them come playoffs. They need to be making top four at majors minimum. Uh, and they look upsettable in the quarterfinal. I'm lo just looking at the matches right now. And in all bar one case, I think, they will play Cloud9 in the, in the quarter. And in the other quarter, they are going to play Eternal Fire. And, but that's in one specific case where a, a specific outcome happens. They're probably going to play Cloud9 in the final and uh, or in the quarterfinal. And they already did that at the RMR and they lost 2-0. And that was when Zyber yeah. was in pretty good form. So like... I don't. I don't have a lot of. I don't have high hopes for them for uh, for the actual playoffs, but yeah. I would say I was worried. I don't really mind if Vitality go through or not. That was one of my picks where I was like, well, honestly, considering the Katowice form and like they did lose that two zero game at the RMR to Cloud Nine, who were pretty much they were pretty weak at that point. So I did look at that and I was like, well, I'm picking Vitality to go through, but they could also just bomb out. Like they just could do that. So. Um, yeah, I feel like they are probably a little bit shaky right now, but we'll uh, yeah. we'll see we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, of course. Um, if, about the three one teams, that, like talking about three one teams, being like, yeah, not great actually. <laughs> it's not great. It doesn't feel right, but it's it's true. It had to be said. Yeah, no. When when you have Mouse who played a respectable game, they played a, played a very good game. But when you have Mouse going three zero, and you are well, the reigning major champions at the moment, then you probably. A three one probably isn't the best thing. Granted, they didn't play mouse, but like when you have, you know, a day, a pretty much a debut team, and mouse making three zero, and you are the reigning major champion, and you said three one after a shaky run of form at the start of the year, then that's sort of like, well, yeah, this is bad. This was like a point where I felt like Vitality really could have used like turning around, like forget about Katowice, mm. and like you made the major, and now let's put in a good performance, and then. You know they play they played close against Mongols and Imperial and they will lose a map to complexity. Like losing to Eternal Fire, I'll take that. Eternal Fire can beat anyone. Yeah, but... an opening BO one against that team, that's not yeah. the real concern. The real concern was the follow up performances, yeah. Mm. So, um yeah, well, I guess uh we'll see what what happens come playoffs. Maybe they just completely show up. Like it's not unheard of that it, actually it's pretty common that players completely change overnight as soon as we turn to playoffs. So um, mm. Yeah. Speaking of teams that are actually going to make playoffs, because I do think they're going to make the playoffs, but haven't been convincing. Navi. So today they play Pain to go through. It's not guaranteed that they'll win it, but I'm, they're the betting favorites. I'm going to give them cr the credit. I really didn't like their best of three performances. Because when they beat Mongols, I'm like, yeah, you, you've survived the opening scare like everyone does against the scrappy underdog team with a few fraggers. They then beat G2, and I think, oh, seeing some form. We're actually seeing a decent level. Like, uh, Wonderful's playing really well. Potentially, we're going to see a better version of JL this event. And we get to the best of threes. My god. You, you, they pick a map and play well on it, and the other maps just fall completely flat. So I'm wondering what's going on with their like map pool. Like, are they just out of depth? Do they just not? Have, do they have like a very shallow map pool, like two maps? They can pick them and win them. But they go very little to do in the veto in terms of maneuverability. That's what it's feeling like right now, because I'm not liking the look from this Navi side in terms of the other maps, the ones they're not picking. That's been really ugly so far. Um, what's been most ugly for Navi, I think, is that they just have some players who don't show up. Um, there's Emma, who's not really doing much. There's, and I, I feel like, I remember Emma doing quite a lot on uh, at the RMR. But oh, yeah, he Emma did have is actually a, one a of the quiet performance at the RMR, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Emma is the lowest rated player of this main stage at the moment. Uh, Bit the entirety. Is... Him and Alexi B joint. Yeah. Wow. The entirety. Lower rated than two Furia players. So... That's incredible. Yeah. But uh, Emma is doing fuck all. Bit isn't doing much either. Like, if maybe you could have dealt with having Emma underperform. Since you do have JL kind of overperforming and wonderful is putting up the numbers yeah. he should be. But you probably could have dealt with Emma doing next to nothing if Bit was actually showing up as well, but he isn't. Um, yeah. I'll take Navi to go through. I feel like the pain Cinderella run has maybe gone far enough, but it's also maybe they could just do the same thing they did to Heroic, just kind of show up and just out of nowhere, just, you know, completely smash them. 
I did hear a stat. I didn't check if this was true, but someone told me a stat that since Alexi B left, um, since Alexi B left ENDS and joined international teams, every time he's been in like a do or die playoff qualification game, like if you win, you go to playoffs. If you lose, you're eliminated. Like yeah. the final chance. Every time he's been in that situation in any tournament, not just majors, but in any tournament, he's only won once out of like six or seven attempts. Which, wow. uh, so. I mean, oh, good. No. if you want to buy into that stat, then he's going to lose today. I think this could, I, I think I predicted this to be a three mapper. And well, I, I think it will be a three yeah. mapper. Given the way they've played, like, let's just take the vetoes that um, Pain have been going with. Yeah. Pain removed Ancient against Heroic. And against uh, Mongols, they remove Ancient as well. So that's actually fine for Navi if Pain are going to ban Ancient. Mm hmm. Pain have also picked Nuke twice, which is a map, Yeah, one of the two maps Na'Vi have shown they can play. So perhaps it's going to work in their favor in terms of map pool balance, that perhaps Pain just don't have the picks to go to, to really make them uncomfortable. But I've got a feeling, yeah, yeah. we're going to see probably like a Mirage as well within the first two picks. And that can go either way. I do think so. Like, even though they, they, they have looked good on it, that can go either way. And their Nuke game that they won against... Was it Cloud9? Might have been. I think it was Cloud9. Uh, they required... Spirit. It was against Spirit, right. That required mm -hmm. one of the most insane performances from JL. Like, mm -hmm. not even... Like, you look at 40 and 19 and, you, and a 1.9 rating, you're like, oh, yeah, he played really well. If you watch the game, it's ridiculous how well he played. Like, he was playing the worst spots, anchoring, taking horrible fights in a lot of scenarios, getting very little assistance, and multi-fragging each and every time, and holding the angles, you know, maneuvering himself perfectly every single time. I've never seen JL play that well. Like, that might be the best map of Counter-Strike that that guy ever plays. You needed that <laughs> to get past Spirit. Pain can pose you the same issues they did, and you're relying on JL heroics. I'm not going to bet on it happening twice, so I... I'm really worried about this Navi team. As I said, they should make it through. But even once they do, let's say they do and they play a quarterfinal. Most likely what? Eternal Fire they match up with? Um, most likely, I think they're going to end up... No, well, they are going to end up with one of the top three seeded teams. So Eternal Fire, Spirit, Mouse, one of those. Uh, yeah, probably. that's, that's going to be rough. I think Eternal Fire would be... Any of these matches are going to be rough. They're probably going to have to bomb straight out in the quarters. Is that good enough, then, actually, in your opinion? For this roster, with the amount of time they've been together, would that be good enough? A shaky run to a quarterfinal exit? Well, they did also play... They did play Spirit and Cloud9 in the best of threes, and they did beat G2. Um, so, it's been shaky, but... I, think, I feel like we're also seeing, like, okay... It's been shaky, but they did still play close against very competent teams. Like they played one two against Spirit and Cloud Nine, and Cloud Nine are looking like in good form at least. Well, they did get battered by Cloud Nine in the maps they didn't pick. <laughs> All right, yeah, I did just check the score. <laughs> yeah, I only saw the first map, so uh, okay. Yeah, you're um, gonna think a lot of Navi yeah. if you only watch the map they pick. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, no, nah, I, I I think they'll be happy with a quarterfinal, but. I, I think Imma's time might be up. There's a there's a realistic chance Imma just doesn't stay with this team after this major, even if they make quarters. Yeah. Um, it sort of depends on what the landscape will be like. You've, you've got to find a good replacement for him, and that might be difficult. But Well, considering um, where he's been playing, I don't think it will be that difficult. <laughs> yeah, but... Well, yeah. Um, we'll see. We'll see. There's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> No, because, yeah, realistically, if you look at the roster, Wonderful has been fairly consistent. Uh, not, like, mm. out-of-this-world crazy in terms of his performance. He's not playing, like, a Munasi. He's not giving you, you know, Zaiwu when he's not sick or in suboptimal air condition, like, air quality conditions. <laughs> but he's giving you, like, good enough. Like, quite good. Quite good. And I'm thinking... He's where he should be, yeah. You combine that, JL playing... Honestly, I, I said it on, on the live stream... JL's their second best player. And then he played that nuke game, and I'm like, well, would you look at that? <laughs> but then you add on top of that, Bit, I think, whilst he hasn't been brilliant, he hasn't been a superstar, he has played good enough for this team to win games. 
But Alexi be calling. You don't need that much in your fifth. You just need not this. Like, not a guy who's getting resources and spots and doing 0.75 ratings. Like, that's his average, I think. That's horrible. Mm -hmm. That's horrendous. So, I don't think it's that hard of a replacement to make. And I agree. Making the quarterfinal, playing close against all these teams, not Cloud9, but like playing close against some other opponents, picking up some wins, is good enough to maintain this roster as a concept. Like, you're not going to start looking for LXCB replacements, like shopping all your other star players. This is the point where you go, okay, we needed that one extra change to go from being a team that can, you know, cough and splutter their way over the finish line to a team who will do it consistently at a high level. Because we've seen them in the past with this roster play better Counter-Strike than this, but that means it's because Immer's just all over the shop. He's really all over the shop, and the majority of the time it is down. So I'm looking forward to a Na'Vi team with a better fifth for this team. Like, for a better fit, fifth for this roster, for this fit. Im is not the guy. I'm sure you can find someone, not without too much difficulty, who can give you the bare minimum that they require. Like, a bit of consistency out of him. Yep. But okay, let's... Uh, well, you, can't, you, you can bring Alexi B out of G2, but you can't bring the G2 out of Na'Vi. Out of Alexi B. Fuck! <laughs> shit, fuck! That would have been, that would have been such, a, <laughs> such a good clip if I just nailed it. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Love it, brilliant, smooth as always. <laughs> That's oh. why they pay you the big bucks. No, but no, yeah, there's options. <laughs> there's options for them. Uh, you know, hey, maybe JKS would have been the solution. Uh, <laughs> it's not. I'm not gonna pretend the rolls will work perfectly, but he'll probably give you a 1.0 rather than a 0.7. Yeah, but it's holy. Shit. Yeah, actually. That's huge as well, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. We've talked about Major a bunch. I'm sure there's more to talk about, but hey, it's the Major. It's going to take a bloody week to talk about it, hence why it's such a yep. big event. The next topic is one that wasn't expected. I'm going to be honest, there was no reason for this to ever be in the conversation. Like, we're talking about the Boros video. I'm sure you mm. all know. So what happened... Is he, we all remember Boros, part of Falcons. He was like the odd man out on a team full of like veterans and guys who played on other rosters. He was the one they'd kept from their mashed together young team that they tried to compete with briefly before putting the real money in. And he gets kicked from that roster after they failed to make it through the RMR pretty expectedly. Like everyone was completely unsurprised that they made that change, even though he is really talented, can get to his numbers. They then brought in, you know, Simple, so it was, that also made it really fair enough. They're like, alright, we're bringing in Simple on loan, Boris here benched. Everyone just nodded, you know, thought whatever. And that, that should have been the end of it. But instead they decided to release a behind-the-scenes video, uh, like a sort of a very try-hard documentary. Mm. Um, to be fair, there's a lot of budget going into it, but it does feel like almost yeah, I think pretentious this was how the, high effort this is. This was the third episode, I think. Yeah, so, an yeah actual, it's, and this is the first one anyone's watched, because... <laughs> in this episode <laughs> they revealed the conversations happening around the RMR and now the first thing I hear is I see tweets about Boros changing to a new mouse you know, just before the mm -hmm. RMR and everyone going that's so silly and I was like yeah that is a bit silly like so much of you know Counter-Strike comes down to kind of how you feel on your setup changing mouse and apparently like fiddling with your settings the entire time not a good look not a good idea not something I would ever do or recommend doing. And again, if this is all we're talking about, it's nothing controversial. <laughs> but after they start losing at the RMR, no, they win a game, then lose one, they then have this team talk outside, because they seem to do this after every game. You know, they talked about a lot about the things they do, like debriefing, decluttering your mind, getting things out there. But they decide that after their, their actual loss is the time they're going to start bringing this topic up. And Sonic talks about it, and I'm like, all right, fair enough. Sonic talks to him, has a go at him, you know, gets it off his chest, like, clear the air a bit. You know, Snappy, also frustrated, talks about it, brings it up to him. Why the fuck is everyone else joining in, though? <laughs> all of a sudden, we've got four players and a coach all roasting this one guy, like, having a go, taking, like, basically all their frustrations out on him. Post game, I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. This is absolutely absurd. Like, if you want to address professionalism, coach, IGL, you want to talk to a player about an issue you're having, those are the guys 
who get to talk to that mm. player in that way. I don't care how many majors make a squad. He doesn't need to dogpile on. Why is Madden joining in the fun? Like, this makes no sense to me. Like, this does feel like you're singling out one player, picking on him, just because you're frustrated and you need to vent. It doesn't give, oh, we need to clear the air, clear our minds. We're about being professional and it's about, like, you know, moving on forward. No, this is just a bullying session just after a loss because y'all were pissed off. Why? There's no need for everyone so else to get involved. The feeling I get from this is that Zonic was operating within a reasonable space. Like, he can definitely call out individual players. He can call out the entire team. He can say, yeah, like, so you know... That's kind of his and job, I, yeah. I feel like he did it in a good way. He was like, well, we fucked up on a lot of things. We probably should have won this game. And then, but I also have to address this individual point with you. And, mm -hmm. like, I know you can... He's also pretty positive because he's like, I know you can do better. You've been improving so much. Like, you can, you can keep going. This was just an unnecessary step backwards. But then I feel, like, I, I feel like the rest of the team, they have, probably this is not just the one thing, but like probably something over oh, yeah. a period of time, as, as long as they've been on Falcons, they, I feel like this is like, they've had stuff building up around Boris over time. And now this was like a perfect, or perfect, it was like an opportunity where like, I can get this out and like, I can I pile on, basically, I can pile on to make this issue look a lot bigger than it actually is. And perhaps that will lead to some something changing. Um, and uh, I feel like that's probably what they did. They probably didn't do it consciously. I can't imagine like this was like something planned or like they even no, thought I don't about. No, like, so it's it's what happens. Like this is what happens with like conflict resolution. Sometimes is that you have uh, you know people act in ways that don't actually resolve the conflict at all. So uh, just out of frustration because we're we're all we're all humans. We have emotions, but. Uh, yeah, probably the silliest thing is releasing it <laughs> again. Um, yes, yeah, releasing it should not have come up. We should never have heard about this. Um, but yeah. I do want to step in. It. I do. I don't. I don't. I don't think again. Players who aren't snappy, Zonic. I don't think those players are coming out here with this like, oh, this is a sick time to just dump my fucking frustrations and get this guy kicked. What mm. up? No. But the point is, Zonic nails his part and then stops doing his fucking job. Like when everyone mm. else starts dogpiling on a player. You tell them to shut the fuck up and focus on the next game. Like that's you've you've done the part you had to do. Like that we we dressed it. Move on. Why does he yeah. allow the rest of it to happen? I don't understand. And who the, the other guy who I don't really understand his role is some kind of like I recognize his face and it's frustrating me. And I feel like it's Lars Robel, right? Yeah, that's who it is. I I feel like I really yeah. know him, and he gives me a handball vibe. Am I get? Am I, is that the right guy? He was from Vitality. Yeah, I, it, he was on Vitality with Zonic as well, wasn't he? Yeah, it was the yeah. and Astralis. He basically him and Sonic have been like. Gotcha. The, we all talk about Sonic building the super teams, but it was him and Sonic pretty much. So yeah, yeah and he seems to be a lot of the the influence when it comes to the way they seem to address problems, run the team. Like he is almost acting like a somewhat sports therapist, somewhat like man manager. I feel like either one of them can just intervene and just be like, "Yo, we need to stop making this like a trauma dump session." And like, because clearly Boros isn't going to stand his ground and fight back. He's like a kid. <laughs> if you look at the look on his face the entire time, he's just a deer in headlights, like terrified to say a damn word. This was just not a, a good idea. And yeah, funnily enough, they didn't make it through. Uh, they ended up losing to Amcal in the most depressing fashion. But yeah, that was just a weird thing that should not have been a topic, should never have come up. And apparently, you said they've now edited the video, so it's no longer in it, which is yep. classic fuck up. And we, we, why would you do that? Just. We yeah. all know it happened. Yeah. Someone clipped it. You're not going to get away with it. Just editing it out and be like, ooh, better not. Oof. Hopefully no one notices that. Like, yeah, we, we all talked about it. Don't worry. I, I do feel uh, the original clip is up on uh, M&M's, uh, Jeff's Twitter, uh, if you want to see it. But um, I, do, I do love how, at this point, a weekly segment of this podcast is social media management fuck-ups, <laughs> which is... Um, <laughs> Because the, the other week, we, we had the fucking Gen 1 thing, and we've had other things. There was the European Pro League thing. There was the, whatever the fuck. All yeah. of, Everybody's just fucking up their public relations, and we love covering it. It's amazing. It's, it's funny, because <laughs> half the time, yeah. the solution is shut the fuck up. Like, you didn't have to talk about this. You didn't have to bring this up. You didn't have to put this out there. Just shut up. But no, they just can't help yeah. themselves, can they? But all right, yeah. we've got one more little story, new story to talk about. And it's unfortunate, I think, because we brought up Sky Esports last week. There was a Sky Esports event, and that was pretty cool, right? And then we also discussed they're holding the, the Sky Esports Masters, or I think they called it, with like really yeah, big-name teams playing. 
Unfortunately, it's moved to online, and I'm so frustrated. Like, I don't even think they did particularly anything wrong, because usually I think in the past we kind of low-key credit it to, like, kind of being incompetent, the, the way they fuck up in the past. This time, they couldn't get permits because of the election, election coming up in India, and as we've, well, as, 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 as we all know, not everyone lives in a society with, like, 30% South Asian populations. Indian elections are chaos. Like, absolute chaos. I kind of get why they've not managed to secure their permits to get this event running, but it just feels, like, so frustrating if you're them. <laughs> oh, yeah. They've put so much good work uh, in just for it to get screwed over by the fact that it's going to be just chaos in the country. They can't do anything. Yeah, last week when we did have the Sky Esports, uh, it was it was called something, mm. the Grand Slam or something. Um, yeah, the and I remember we specifically yeah. mentioned, yes, it was nice that Sky Esports managed to host the LAN because they've had a lot of trouble doing it in the yeah, past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and soon we have the Masters, <laughs> and now it's online. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be a I, th I think it's a three hundred fifty thousand dollar event, which was supposed to be held in. Somewhere in India, oh, uh, I feel like it was a city. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, never mind then. But um, yeah, now it's about it's about two three weeks out, and uh, yeah, it's that's going to be fun, I guess. It's also going to be held in Europe online, which makes is... sense to be honest. Yeah, but it is interesting because there's still an Indian close qualifier, so some Indian team is going to have to go to Europe for that. But um, well, again, that's that a, works, that's an expense, but obviously. Sky Sports probably end up covering, let's be honest, because they... Hopefully, yeah. I mean, realistically, they're, they're here to run events to grow the Indian scene. If they don't fly the Indian team who qualified out to Europe to play their event that they had to move online, it'd be pretty shitty. Let's be real. It'd be a shitty it would. Thing. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they will fly the team into Europe to boot camp. You know, maybe they'll end up in Serbia. They'll have to sort something out. Mm. That's usually where teams go to, especially if you don't have to... If you don't have to Get all the visas sorted. It's a whole hassle as well. It's it's. I've heard it's easier to get to Serbia than mainland EU. It is. So that might be the because uh, Serbia is not the European Union. Yeah. So that might be the play. Yeah. Uh, or you know they're Indian. Maybe it'll be easier to just find a boot camp in the UK. Uh, it's just very easy for people from that part of the world to come into in the UK for like non permanent reasons. Uh, but yeah, mm. that's pretty much it. It's unfortunate. It's a shame. I really want to see another event because their first event was pretty cool. But let's go on to our weekly recurring topics. We have the Eternal Shuffle, of course, as we do every week because everyone's constantly shuffling their pieces about. And the first one is <laughs> technically a leak, not confirmed. Uh, you know, it's an inside, as the CIS uh, Twitter space would call it. Hmm. NIP to swap Wrinkle. For head trick, which seems like, well, if I opened a dictionary and tried to find lateral move, is I would just have this, just looking back at me. What, what inspired this? Aside from the fact that you're obviously cutting head trick, why is wrinkle the solution you're going to? Have you not learned your lesson? What is your take, Quack? Why do you uh, think they're making this change? <laughs> like this exact? Oh change? fuck you. Fuck if I know. Probably because it's <laughs> cheap and it may it kind of makes sense from like from the standpoint that if they want to make like accommodate head trick or something. I remember when when the original benching happened, I was actually slightly surprised the head trick got benched because he was a very good player last year for NIP. He was the best player for NIP last year as a rookie, and he was doing pretty well. I thought like, well, under the circumstances of how shitty this NIP team has been all of 2023, head trick has done pretty good. Um, so when they benched him, I was like, all right, that's strange, but probably that means that they don't want the youngster anymore and they want to go for someone older because after you bench Hedrick, if you go for another youngster and try to accommodate him for tier one, you're just starting from square one when you already had Hedrick with like a year so of a year's worth of work under the belt. Why would you go for yeah. another young? And now they've gone for another fucking youngster, uh, supposedly. So, uh, we did actually get a comment from NIP uh, when we when we reported about this because the original leak was sheep esports, but then at those two we we uh, reported about it and we actually managed to ask NIP and they said, well, yes, we have talked with Bait, 
um about this but we are still nowhere near final and like we're talking to a lot of orgs interested in the roppers so um mm. yeah so it could not it could be something else it could be a different move and yana i know you told me pretty sure are we can we talk potentially it was they're looking at fuzi as well oh no it was a harumi Le- the harumi <laughs> leak was oh, fuzi harumi and leak. man okay. the harumi the harumi leak was fuzi and mantu and both of them make a lot of sense especially after okay. fuzi put up a very good performance and in, uh, in showdown when they came here yeah he did um, actually that, that was fair he was the the shining yeah. star of that team um yeah i'm just having a look now so- at 2023 like man that team was bad but no it's a weird mid move because and you've put it perfectly that like why go from one kid to another kid <clears throat> i guess you don't have to teach wrinkle what the big green gun is like he's actually an orpa <laughs> but at the same time he's far from a finished tier one product is this really a rostered like you want to be- is res really here to develop youngsters still like what are we doing if this is the play so i don't think this can be real i don't think this can be the play like no way is this what they're actually going to settle for rebuild with more kids under alex nah come on yeah the because when you do get a youngster, you, the entire point is that you need to put in a lot of work to make them good, or like make them better. And you've already done a lot of that with head trick. Now you're just throwing that away by benching him. And then you're getting a new head trick. But I mean, okay, if we're, if we're going to be real, Wrinkle probably, he's, a, he's an all right opera. He's not amazing, but he's all right. He could have stepped into a team at some point. I wouldn't have thought it was an IP, but he could have. It's cool he for him. He could have made him a good headway in the CIS scene. Yeah, <laughs> he could have played for someone in there. Yeah, I could have seen him on like uh, someone who's already fallen from grace, uh, or a much sooner fallen from grace. OG, like say Regali, and find some something decent, and then you know that's a wrink- wrinkle. Could have been an OG, and he could yeah. have played. But they also have a bunch of youngsters now. There's Nexius and whoever the fuck else is on that team. But there's. Uh, NIP, I would have probably rather seen them pick up, well, Regali, yeah, I would have rather seen them pick up Regali than Wrinkle. But it's co- I guess it's cool for Hedrick to go back to play with N- NPL, um, I guess. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's a very weird move. I do hope it doesn't happen. I would rather see Fuzi or Mantu on this team, because I feel like mm-hmm. Mantu is going to put up a, an equal performance to Wrinkle. Let's be honest, I don't think Mantu is much worse than Wrinkle is, and he also brings a bit of experience in that sense. If you do yeah, want to get a youngster as the, the fifth, maybe less of a ceiling for Mantu, but yeah, I'd still think uh, on a game to game basis, he'll probably get about the same. So yeah, that's fair. Uh, if you if you if you were going to pick up a youngster, let's just briefly mention there's silence on young ninjas, and like obviously I'm biased because I, I this guy is sort of in my in my sphere um, quite a bit more than he's in yours probably. But young ninjas had a very cool ass fucking. Um, week or so the past couple of uh, weeks after this benching because they got to play a lot of good good events where the main team was supposed to play and they did really fucking well i mean we mostly talked about maxter maybe yo cab a bit but there was also silence who actually put up a, a respectable performance where the team played very well so if you were going to go for a youngster go for your fucking in-house guy again they they just refuse doing it maxter he said on stream that no i'm not gonna step up into the main team and uh, maybe he could be lying or but like he what he said was i'm definitely not going to the main nip team so they just keep fumbling their fucking academy team so yeah yeah because maxter's really good <laughs> really, you really see, f- the worst part is it's not even like we're getting hyped over some kid when we're talking about maxter like just random mm-hmm. kid we're talking about a guy who played on the main team and played better than mm. most players who've been on the main team, earning a full salary and above the age of 20. You know, like, he's actually a really good player and pretty legit. But no, they're not going to pick him up. Yeah. They're going to go sign some random Ukrainian kid. Uh, why not? Yeah. Why not? But let's talk about Monty then. Speaking of random things mm. happening. Promoted two players to their main roster uh, from the academy side, Ryu and Gizmi. Mm. Now, Ryu, I know bugger all about uh, because I don't think he's really played much with the main team. Uh, no, a couple games they, it was he, pre stand in stint, and I don't think they went particularly yeah, he, well. Before Montegen, he mostly played in the Benelux scene, which was kind of strange. But he played for KRC Gink, and he played like that sort of that's okay. that's the vibe. Right, but either way, yeah. it, even his in his Monty games, I didn't really catch them. The stats didn't pop off the st- pop, pop off the screen, and he's not a guy I've kept my eye on. Gives me I only know more about because I've watched one or two of his games with Monty, <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and they were not that great. Just going to be flat out with it. Not great. So Monty, you think, are just, yeah, pure bedroom orging. Sorry, pure bedroom orging. That, that took a while to get out. And they just haven't got any money. So they're like, 
we'll just promote some academy kids. Waro, have fun. Um, I don't really see these as like you know supposed to be big time signings. They're just promoting some guys, hoping it works out. I think it's it's not the worst idea. Uh, it's better than signing random people. Uh, at least you have them there. So cool. Yeah. yeah. They promote them, give them a chance, see how it works out. I'm not that invested though. I don't think it's going to be a particularly good move. No. Gizmi is not the worst player to pick up. He did play one RMR with Viperio, in case you forgot, but he did. They finished last. Yeah. Uh, for the Paris RMR. Enough said. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very, uh, it's sad actually that they didn't actually end up picking up Kvem. Like it was it felt like the perfect timeline for him to join Monty and then he did play an event with Monty and then they stopped using him for whatever reason. It gives me I feel like he could be good enough. But he's he like he won't replace um SDY, but like he, he's uh, he could be a decent enough player to sort of fill that bro bro sized hole in the team. And then I thought, well, all right, Kvem. That's going to be a possible actual SDY replacement. And then he, well, he played a couple of maps and, you know, then he was gone again. So I don't know what the fuck is going on with him. Yeah, the Kvem yeah. would have been way more interesting to me. But unfortunately, here we are. They didn't make it. Yeah. So we have nothing to talk about. Uh, yeah. Right, that's pretty much the internal shuffle. Not a very busy week, to be honest. Post-major, we're going to have a lot to talk about, I assume. But currently, no, that's not too much changging. Let's briefly talk about... Yeah, there was an uh, endpoint bench, uh, some player who I didn't even notice in the first place, and uh, Betboom made a change, but fuck them. Okay. Um, endpoint bench, yeah. too. Switcher. Oh, yes, good. Sorry, no offense, and, Switcher, uh, but you weren't playing well enough. And, um, yeah, and Betboom swapped Danists for minor yes, so... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I was asked about that on the stream, actually. Uh, yeah. Makes no sense, that move to me, but whatever. It's Naphany. Figure it yeah. out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're just bringing in, like, another Chiron essentially, in terms of style and mm. skill set for a Danist who's not Chiron, but that's fine. Uh, do yeah. as you wish. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to start telling you how to live your life. Prospects of the week. I'm going to let you start, because I didn't really pay attention to this guy. I didn't notice him. Who did you take? I picked Nissim, and I've actually kept my eye on this guy for years. Um, <sighs> Nissim, uh, a short view back to the past. When he popped up on my radar was when he played for Casa, the uh, oh, the organization wow. fo founded and owned by um, Casemiro, the football player. Mm -hmm. They played for, I think, about six months. And let me actually check the timeline. Yeah, they played for about six months in Europe as a Brazilian team. This was, um, this was the Brazilian... No way, never mind. The Brazilian steel wasn't here yet. It was pretty much no name players like Delboni, Yeps, Landin, and then mm -hmm. Nissim. And um, they won, I think they won like 30% of their maps. They played all of the time in Europe, which was, you know, cool. But then they played pretty bad tier teams in Europe. Um, there's no one here that really sticks out. It's like Nexus was like one of their wins um, in right. 2021. That sort of level of play. Um, everyone on the team was about 1.0, except for Nissim, who stuck out with a 1.14. And I was like, wow, this guy has been playing for half a year in Europe on an underperforming Brazilian team. And in over 100 maps, he's actually performed a very respectable rating. Hmm. Worth keeping an eye on this guy. So he bunched, bounced around for a while. He was caught on, he was on Kaz's bench for another year and a half, I think, which was wow. Um... Oh, sorry, another half year. He was on Casa's bench for half a year alone. Everyone else left, and he was just there. Mm. He was on, and then he's bunched, bounced around like Los Grandes. He signed for Sharks, and I think he was on loan to Flamengo. He went back to Sharks, and then eventually, now he ended up on Pain in this most recent rebuild. And I'll be honest, his numbers on like this Shark team and Flamengo and Los Grandes, he was pretty poor. So I didn't really think too much about him when he came into pain. And I thought, well, he's alongside NQZ, who I feel like I think he was on 9Z and it didn't work out. And he was on Zero Zero Nation and it didn't work out. There's Cowes, who was on Furious Academy. And that was pretty much it. It's a no-name team. There was Lux, who was on Fluxo and got booted like pretty much first out of everyone because he was a bad opper. Um, and then there's Big Zero. So I was like, well, this team is dog shit. And then they made the major. And I was like, they are going to go 03. And then they made the main stage. And I was like, they are going to go 03. And now they're in the decider game. And Nissim, I mean, obviously, the talk of the town right now is Big Zero. But Nissim has yeah. also put up great numbers. Uh, 
so that's mostly like, I feel like maybe this is like, finally, this materializes, this potential that showed up for half a year in uh, 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe this is finally happening. So he's 22 years old. There's uh, obviously a lot of stuff happening in Brazil right now. We had a crap ton of teams making the major from Brazil. And they did well. Uh, most yeah. of them. So, oh, yeah. um, so I don't know. As a future prospect, I feel like Nissim is the guy you would actually pick up out of pain because Big Uzira, while he's good, he is quite old. I feel like maybe he sticks out. Uh, he's, I he's mean, he's seven in an IGL. He's not that old. He's not that old, but like you know, he's if really you're not old, like most IGLs have peaked in their thirties at this rate, and also, oh right, yeah, you're Rain's fair, still fragging at a good thirty. Jake can still frag, and he's not even a pure fragger. He just is an IGL who frags better than his entire roster. Like it's not getting too far ahead of ourselves with talking about old. <laughs> That is fair, but if we're talking about moving upwards as a Brazilian player, the destination is Furia, right? And Furia yep. are already a pretty old team, like on average. I, I don't care. Uh, so <laughs> you, you, no, you I don't. You're gonna honestly not sign a guy because he's twenty-seven. It's not that old. I think you'd have to boot either Fallen. You'd have to boot Art, to be honest. Well, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, that's uh, anyway, obvious, aside yeah. <laughs> aside from Big Uzira. Uh, Nissim is probably the guy you want to sign. He's a young. He's one of the younger guys. He's a very good rifle player. Mm. Um, he's played a very good major. Uh, there's already like, you know, there's teams I think could be making moves. I could see, um, MIB, I, like I could see a Brazilian shuffle happening. And I don't know if he wants to leave Pain and Atomat. Maybe he wants to stick it out with this team. But there's well, uh, other places he could probably move. Like there's uh, North American teams who might want to look at him. There's. Uh, you know, yeah, there's possibilities for him. More importantly, so, yeah. I think for, for Payne, these two guys, Nissim and Big Zero, there's a Brazilian shuffle. Um, why wouldn't everyone... Everyone's going to come to you, surely. Like, aside from the Furia players, you have your pick of the litter if you're Payne. You guys make the major, play the best Counter-Strike, and have the best chance of actually doing stuff. If I'm, like, say, Insani, and I want out of MIBR, why would I look mm. at Furia? Uh, aside from salary, why yeah. would I look at Furia? I'm definitely going to Payne. So, no, I think Nissim and Big U stick together and potentially stick on this team and just recruit based on the promise of playing with them at a high level, rather than look at our big money and our fan base, which is the entire appeal of Furia, nothing else. That's actually a really, really good point. I could see, uh, like, Lukowski and Zivi maybe makes a pain comeback. Like, uh, yeah, we're talking a pretty good-ass pain team at this point. So, yeah, um, that's actually a really good point. But, yeah, it's looking up for him. He's got good numbers. Mm. He's played a good major. Who have you picked? Well, I've pretty much picked the younger option to Big Zero. Like, I've, I've picked a frag in IGL who's leading a team that really doesn't have much of a right to be here over, based on the overall quality of the roster. I've picked Patty. Now, Patty is 25, which I know for you, Leo, it's very old, but for the rest of the world, very young. IGL especially, at 25, you're entering your prime at if that. Like, you're not actually that far into it. Yeah. And I want to respect that statement. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. But also, quite importantly, Patty is playing an outstanding game as an individual. Like, when you watch him play and you watch him hit, like, crazy shots, like, he can multi-frag in positions no IGL has the right to. Like, sure, we used to, like, Karakum occasionally, like, winning a BS clutch. No, no, Patty's just outright fragging. And he's calling a team that has no right to be here into contention. If you look at these guys, sure, you get people who will try to sell you on guys like Salazar on Kragan. And Kragan will have the occasional map, and Salazar will have the occasional map. We think, oh god, he's actually really good. If you've watched them for as long as I have, this, tw- this core has been around forever. In Tier 2, they don't look that special as fraggers. In Tier 2. In Tier 1, they're really not good fraggers. But Patty, for his role, and honestly, just in general, might be the best aimer on the team at times. Like, it's actually kind of crazy. But for his role, he's an amazing fragger. He's calling an amazing game. Like, they play a really good style. I think he's the next guy in Denmark. Like, when you look at the IGLs we talk about, we had this conversation when Astralis decided to make Device the IGL. We talked about TMB, who's 22, probably needs another step before he takes that step up. And we talked about Patti, who no one else really talked about. Like, no one brings these guys up. Everyone's still talking about bring Glaive back. Realistically, if you don't want to have to go buy out Glaive, you know, because Ents are going to make their profit, these are the guys you actually need to be talking about. And Patty, I think, definitely is deserving of that step up because he's come to this major. Sure, he's not made it out of the elimination stage. <clears throat> but he's put on quite the performance considering 
who he's working with. And considering how great the level of play was, you can just sell it based off that. You don't have to give the context to the rest of the roster. Just look at how he played and look at the general strategy. Like, it was really good. Like, he was a really good IGL. Just sign this guy, please. Please. I can't be dealing with watching the rest of the roster, though. Don't care about them. Sign Patty. Yeah. That's essentially my pitch. Because it's, it's a bit of a weird one. He's 25. He's old for a prospect. But he's an IGL prospect. Mm-hmm. So I thought, make the exception. Yeah. Uh, good pick. Ecstatic is... Uh, they're, a, they're, a, they're a very weird team. They, they are. Because uh, I would have... Com- I completely rid off this team when they uh, made Manx the IGL. And then... Uh, like when they got rid of the Wolfie Bird from Sky, the international lineup, and they got the Danish lineup with yeah, Manx. They picked the... up. It was a roster. They were they were playing under a different name, pretty much this entire roster, weren't they? Uh, uh K- Kabi Queenix Kragen came in and Breezer. Were uh, they all on Masonic together at the end? Like pretty much they on the been, entire yeah. roster, but yeah, yeah, they still had Kabi yeah, and uh, Notan, but yeah, Kragen. I oh, don't mind. It was a bit of a different roster. No, they have done a fair bit of signing. Co- yeah, corrected. but then yeah. they they swapped Breezer for Salazar and it still looked shit. And then they start it started looking good. And Manx became a good IGL. He left, and when he left again, I completely read off the team again because I was like, oh well, pretty much nothing this team. And then they go get their best result to date. So mm. uh, credit to Patty for doing all of that. So yeah, yeah. the Astralis Talent Factory, by the way, Astralis Talent. Patty was on there too. So if you just look yeah. at the list of players they could have signed all this time. They're a bit like an IP in that sense. They've kind of left some money on the table. Like <laughs> you, look, you go look back into who's been on the Astralis Academy roster. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's they're taking a page out of the NIP book in that sense. They have mm. a lot of fucking talent that has passed through the Astralis talent uh, team, and a lot of it has materialized. None of it has materialized on Astralis. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. Poor those guys, I guess. Um, Let's see what they do next. <laughs> no. Let's see what let's see where Paddy ends up because we talked about this when Astralis did their move. That Paddy was a very realistic addition there. I feel like, and then when he made the major, that was impossible. Mm, yeah. And let's see what they do. I don't know what ecstatic are like. Um, what their ambitions are like? Do they want to build? Try to build off of this and like reinvest and try to be a contender, or are they happy just being like an upper tier two team for the rest of their time? Um, in which case, they might just sell Patty on and you know do something. Yeah, with that, that money. might that might be the the play long term. Yeah, for now, yeah, just really impressive little player. Uh, I think we have. Mm. Oh yes, great. We've got time. Uh, we've got a time for a quick little uh, tangent, a little side note. Uh, Man, I've just got to think, because I think it'd be boring. I want to do Dr. Duck's diagnosis here. Mm-hmm. But I think, is it is it uninteresting? Yeah, it is. We can't do Fury again, because despite the uh, solution being still so bloody obvious, um, they're never going to make the changes. So I'm going to give you a different mm-hmm. team to try and figure out. Uh, let's let's not go from this major, from this stage. Let's go from the stage before, in the mm-hmm. opening stage. We had a team mm-hmm. disappoint... And that was Apex. Mm. I'm sure. We know there's yes. some context behind the scenes, which I'm sure you're going to give, so I'm not going to spoil it. But at the same time, you have this roster. I'm going to allow you to make two and a half changes. Because I'm allowed to make two changes, and then the change that was kind of already going to happen anyway, I'll count as a half. So you get to replace that player as well if you want to. You see oh, what I mean? All right. So yeah. Dr. Duck, please diagnose the problem and fix it. With Apex. Fuck. All right. So the half change is obviously Stiko. His contract is up and he could be re signed. I feel like he's put up the minimum performance where they could be happy enough with him, but I don't think they will. So that's a half change. Stiko is gone. Um, well, let's see if I can put a patriotic spin on this because I do want to see Swedes on Apex. Uh, Jake and Manok are obviously staying. So I guess. I have the choice of keeping Sense and Tatsunito or getting rid of them. Um, fuck. All right. I think I would. Ah, okay. Throwing, kind of throwing Sweden under the bus here. But if my sole focus is fixing Apex, I would get ZTR instead of Sense. And I'd probably 
oh, fuck, yeah, let's do this. This is actually a realistic move. Let's get Plopsky in there instead of Satsanito. And that would be kind of interesting, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Would that maybe be something? So you get, like, the Jake and Plopsky entry duo, and you have... What's happening with Stiko? Because I... I, I... You seem to be talking. Oh yeah, about, fuck! I can replace him as well. Who's coming him in? Him. Like, yeah. Uh, I completely forgot about him. If we want to go like full Swedish speaking, I'd probably put Maxim in there. That's a good move. Yeah. Let me just think for a second, because if I, I I might want to keep some realism in this, and I can pick someone else instead of ZTR. Like I could put Golden in instead of Sense, because. Uh, uh, let's put the Swedish spin on it. We'll we'll take we'll take Plopsky and Golden from Godsent, and then we'll put um, who was it? Maxter uh, in from uh, instead of Stiko, and that's my that's my four out of five. I don't like four plus five teams, but I think Jacob can cope with speaking Swedish for for a while, and that's right. that's a banger team. Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna lie. When I said you were allowed to cut Stiko in my head, I went, "He's gonna put Maxter in there. He's gonna put Maxter in there." And I was like, Soviet. that's kind of the right move as well. Like, I would, yeah. if I'm theorizing roster moves, that would be one I'd make. Uh, the Golden Plopsky duo, yeah, it's rough because I don't think Sense has been particularly brilliant. I'm just, I don't know if I'm sold on Golden right now. I think the Plopsky part I'm fine with, especially going for Sassanito. You don't actually, Sassanito has not really been very impressive. So Plopsky doesn't have to be no. on his best form to replace him. Uh, and I think if he's on his best form, he's a far better player. So Plopsky, I think, is a great move. Yeah, but I'm just, about I'm like torn for, on the golden for sense. Realistically, you could probably keep sense. I feel like he's had quite a short amount of time, especially as IGL. He's only had a couple of months. I feel like like two or three. He's been there five at most. Yeah. Uh, he's been there five, but I, I, he wasn't calling from the start of it. I don't think. I think he took over calls. After Kixon, only after Kixon left, he was there before Kixon left, so he oh, only right, took yeah, over was, by New yeah. Year's. Um, so I feel like you know, give him some time in that sense. But if I'm gonna make this a, if I'm gonna make it a fun one and just throw realism out of the window, then we have ZTR. But I don't think ZTR wants to leave Metasport. I don't think he should leave Metasport. Mm. Uh, so making it realistic, Golden is the next best option there if I want to keep it Swedish. But let me think if there's a, if there's an international option. Well, you could have gone for Patty, I guess, but that's sort of conflicting role-wise. Um, let's see if there's an international option. I don't think there is. Like, I feel like you could maybe get snacks, but that doesn't really work either. I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, exactly. Um, no. I think it's it's got to be ZTR in that case if we're talking about like IGLs to replace Sense. That's okay. got to be ZTR for me. So yeah. All right. Well. Or Golden. That's, that's the, the diagnosis. Uh, let us know in the comments how wrong you think Quack is. I'm sure some people will agree with these moves, but some people will notice the slight amount of Swedish bias and probably have a thing or two to say. Um... I'll take Manx as my backup option. So just uh, <laughs> in, in the event he actually wants to play Counter Strike again. Then, okay. Uh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, but no, that's yeah. been retake the week. Uh, another big week of Counter Strike coming up because we have well, the final elimination stage games start in ten minutes, and then the actual playoffs of the major. And I'll be in Copenhagen for the actual event. You're not joining me because I have exams or some bollocks. Um, so we can't do. We're not going to do a show like impromptu in the middle of uh, some Danish cafe with me and having a laptop and a mic. Like that's not going to work. Fuck, nice. that would have been cool. Next major. No, in fact, that's Shanghai. Next, next major. Yeah, we're not bugger off to <laughs> Shanghai to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. I think we're going to do... Because we have this patron Q&A... Oh, the patron, sorry. The member Q&A is supposed to be this coming Sunday. I'll put out the post, and I think we maybe can like pre-record it. Like, pre-record that. And then release it on time. So we can definitely still deliver on that. It'll just have to be a quick turnaround on the questions. So members, get yep. them in, look out for the post. And yeah... Solid show. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.